Hey ladies and welcome to Makeup Tip Monday. Today we are going to do a soft smoky purple eye. I'm going to do two weeks of New Year's Eve looks. This week and next week. So even the day after Christmas I'm going to go live and I'm going to do something more dramatic next week. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit softer. I actually did this this weekend. Stafford and I went out for our anniversary and I got this purple dress I'm going to show you. And it has little cutouts on the side. So it's very simple. It comes up high on my neck. And I wore high heels, of course, and just had some simple earrings. This hair took forever. I'm gonna show you a couple tricks with that. But um, so what I thought we'd do is something simple today, and then next Monday I'll do something a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna start by pinning my hair back because I hate having my hair in the way when I'm doing my makeup. And also, this is more of a simple look for you to achieve because there's only a few colors that I actually used on my eye. So really super simple, but nice and soft. I didn't use any eyeliner in this look either, so I hope that you have fun recreating this. And remember to let me know that you're here. Last week, I did a drawing for a set of eyelashes, and congratulations, Sherry Bowen um, won that, and they are on the way. I sent them to you because I know you live in Panama City, so congratulations. This week I'm going to do something a little different and I'll tell you in just a minute, but let's get started so that we can get through with this look really, really quickly. We're going to start with my brow and I know some of this might be review, but I think the more that we hear some of these things, the better we'll get and of course we need lots of practice anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thicken this brow and I'm going to start by brushing the hairs up and... You know, one of the things, let me see if that, where my tweezers went. Oh, here they are. Before I do my brows and before I do my eye makeup, uh-oh, my eyelash lifting on this side. We'll have to take a look at that in a minute. Is I kind of pluck out some of these random hairs because I don't want it to affect the look of, it won't grab, of my um, eyeshadow. This thing is not working at all. Okay, so we're just gonna leave those hairs there for today. I'm just gonna look gangly. All right, so I am using the E11 Morphe eyeliner, angled eyeliner brush and brow brush today. I just got the Anastasia Beverly Hills brush for my dip brow, and I didn't like it as much, but it might be because I'm used to using this E11 brush, and once you get used to using a brush for a certain look, it's really hard to go to something different. So. I am using Ash Brown in Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow, and I'm gonna start again at the bottom, and you can see that I am missing hair, like right there. So I'm gonna fill that in first, and I keep a very, very light hand when I do this part, like barely touching. But then I'm gonna show you Again, and I know some of this is review, how I get my brow on there. So I draw my line all the way from the beginning because I'm shaping out my brow first, then I'm going to go back and fill it in. And we're actually going to do eyes first today as well because if we have any fallout on our face, I don't want it to be messy, especially when you're working with purples because if you do a purple smoky eye and you have fallout on your eye after you've already highlighted, concealed, done foundation, then that's when you look kind of raccoonish. So um, taking that along the bottom of the brow and then I'm working the color up. I have used a lot of other brow products recently and I just keep coming back to my dip brow from Anastasia. If you like her pencils, I just feel like they blend a little bit better than some of my other products. One of my, I put other products on, once I put it on, it's on and if, and I can't blend it out too much and it doesn't um, look as natural. So you can see that I went all the way to the tail. And I had a client this weekend whose tail sort of stopped right there. Don't forget your tail. Start to really think about the shape of your brows and do they end too early to do they, um, in too early here or here and extend the tail out if you need to, but do not go down. Remember that you wanna go out, not down, because you don't wanna pull your face down. So now I'm working upwards and you can see that I have another bald spot right there and I'm actually going to go just above it and then I'm gonna fill it in. All right, 
So I'm starting to create that arch and I'm giving myself a thicker brow by working upwards on the brow bone and I have very little left on my brush. By the time I get to the inside here, it's gonna look more diffused because I don't have a lot left. And that's what you want because we don't want this in here to be super boxy. All right, so you can see that I gave myself more of an arch I gave myself more of a point. And then by the time I came in here, I really didn't touch too much. So I have not reloaded my brush. I have nothing really left on there. Anything that is left, I'm just kind of smudging it on the inside to fill that in. And I am kind of picky about my brows. Honestly, my brows probably take longer than anything else on my face. So this look is super simple and it won't take you very long, but Filling in your brows probably will take a little bit longer than anything else because you want it to look right. God bless those of you who have a full brow. I would love that. For those of you who saw some of my pictures on Instagram recently at Image by Lisa, um, there's such a thing as microblading. It's tattooing your eyebrows on but different than you think. Um, have you ever seen somebody with their eyebrows tattooed on and it just looks totally wrong? A lot of people have that problem and it's not the right color. Well, this is where they make teeny tiny little cuts that mimic hairs. So they go like that and then they put the dye down in the tiny little cut and it actually looks like hair. The little tattooed sprigs mimic your real hair. So I looked at that and thought, that looks like something I would really, really love to do. All right, so that's the ash brown, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill it in with my NYX brow gel, and this just sort of thickens the actual hair and it puts it into place. So I'm brushing it up, and it'll stay put. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna prime our eyelid, and I'm gonna do it the same way that I always do. I'm gonna use my Maybelline Under Eye Eraser I've been using the shade Neutralizer, which you don't have to remember any of that. I will put in the comments what I've been using. And I always work off the back of my hand. I put a small amount there. And I'm going to use my Morphe M410 brush. And I like it because it has a teeny tiny fine tip. See how small it is? And I am going to carve out my brow. And this is the order that I take even with my clients. Because I want the brow to be perfected first, and then I work on to eyes just in case there's any fallout. And I go ahead and fill in the whole eyelid. And I know that most of you have watched me do makeup before, so you know you want to prime your eyelid so that your eye makeup stays on better. Because if you get to work and you're like, it doesn't even look like I did anything. <clears throat> or you have a creasing in your actual crease where the eyeshadow just collects or the color just doesn't go on very vibrantly then you want to start priming your eyelid oopsie now you can see what I did is basically I highlighted my brow using concealer and then I just go back and I blend it in the other reason that I prime my eyelid and I prime everybody else's eyelids because some people have broken capillaries or they have genetic darkness on their eyelid and I want to cancel out all that color. So I just go ahead and do the whole eyelid at the same time. Now you can take the concealer if you have some left and you can do the top too. If you want your eyebrow to look super sharp and perfect, just carve out the top as well. You see what I'm doing? It's like art, it's like coloring in the lines. This is also great for if you messed up a little bit, like maybe you came too high or you came too low, or you just didn't make it as perfect as you want. You can carve out the brow and make it just perfectly shaped. And this is an additional step. You do not have to take this step, but it depends on how much time I have to do my makeup. Um, for how many little steps like this I add in. Okay, so now that brow is coming together. Big difference, huh? For me, brows are everything because I just 
you know, I don't have any really. All right, so then I'm gonna use my translucent powder and a wedge, and I'm going to set all of that. That's super, super duper important for the blendability of every eyeshadow color I'm about to use. Now we have used purples before when we've done makeup together, and they were more like a purpley brown color. Today we are actually using purple. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. This is the first color we're about to use, and it's called lavender. So I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna use it as my transition color. I'm gonna use my favorite MAC brush, the 224 Blending, Puffy Blending Brush, and I always just wave the excess color off. And I look down at my mirror. Again, you can see your crease when you look down at the mirror. You cannot see your crease and the lid when you look straight at the mirror like this. So you wanna look down, and you're gonna do your swish, 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 windshield wiper, windshield wiper. And I am just above my crease. I've told you before, it's because I have more of a hooded eye. I have a very large hood and it comes down over my eyelid. So I want to darken this area so it goes away from the eye. And this is such a light color, you can't really see a whole lot of it going on. And looking at it in the package, it would be a scary color to put in this area, but it's so pretty once you put it on, just trust me. You can wear purples, especially if you have green eyes, girls. If you have green eyes, purples is opposite on the color wheel and it's going to make your eye color pop and look really pretty. I have brown eyes. Brown eyes can do whatever they want, so you have much more liberty than anybody else. So I just get it on and smudge, 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 windshield wiper, windshield wiper, over and over until I feel like it looks as diffused as possible. Now I know it's hard to get used to doing your eyes first because it looks crazy until you get your foundation perfect, but just trust me when you're doing smoky eye, this is the best way. All right, the second color that I'm gonna pick up, I've actually used before on camera with you guys, and that is this purple. It's from a Drama Queen trio, and it's the very lightest, and it almost doesn't look purple. Look at it compared to a lavender, but it is purple, it's a very matte purple. And I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of that and make sure I got the right color, yep, I did. And I'm gonna go back into the same area, but I'm gonna work in a very small motion. So I'm actually not gonna switch my brush out, but I'm not gonna be like all over the place. I'm gonna keep it a little bit more contained because remember, we usually go bigger brushes, lighter colors, to darker colors, lip smaller brushes. So I'm using the same brush, so I'm gonna keep it in the crease. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm just deepening my crease. And you could keep adding if you wanted to at this point. You could keep adding that color and keep going back in. Now the third color I'm gonna use, and this look only has three colors, which is kind of nice. This is not a very complicated look. I'm gonna pick up um, a MAC brush that I use all the time, and I can't even remember. I think it's a 217, but, and I'm gonna pick up this purple, and I will name it for you. See how bright that is in the package? but on it's really pretty, so it's gonna to come together. All right, we're gonna dip it in, working with our smaller packing brush. Again, I'm looking down, because that way I can see everything, and I always start at the lash line, and I use patting motions. So whenever I'm actually trying to pat color on and do a smoky eye, I use a smaller packing brush, and I pat the color in and push it onto the eyelid instead of that sweeping back and forth motion, because I'm not trying to make a blended diffused look right now. I'm actually trying to get that color on. See it starting to show up. Oh, so pretty. And it matches my dress perfectly. So I'm gonna work it in from the lash line and the outside all the way to the inside because this is sort of a smoky eye. So I'm gonna come all the way in. Today I did not use eyeliner, I just stuck my lashes on because I wanted my eyes to look fresh and open and I didn't want any lines. I wanted it to sort of be soft. I know this is a New Year's Eve sort of look, but I felt like it looked sort of springy. And it was so pretty. For those of you who aren't wearing sequins this New Year's Eve, you just want a simple shift dress, something um, casual cocktail attire. Maybe you're going to some friend's house to do a little party and you're not going out raving, as I like to call it. So I got the color on and that is that really, really vibrant, beautiful purple. I'm going to pick up my empty blending brush and I'm going to blend. 
Now, the reason that it looks diffused and blended is because we use those other colors first, so there's just a nice gradient of color. If you slap that darkest color on first, you're not going to have that gradient where you work from darker color, lighter color, lighter color, skin. It should never be color skin. So, I got it on, and I'm actually going to, where did I put it? Use my liner up underneath my waterline. You guys seen me do it before. It's called tight lining. Oops. We'll get that in a second. Okay. I push it up underneath my eyelid. And this is how I kind of make a thicker lash. Is I go underneath. And then I'm going to use my mascara. And I always use the same one. The telescopic in black. It does not run on my face and I have really sensitive eyes and everything runs on me. If it's going to run on somebody, it's going to run on me. So this is what I found that does not run. We're going to fix that eyeliner in a second. Sorry, I got it all over my eye. All right, if you are on, let me know you're on and I'm going to tell you what I'm giving away today because I always do some kind of little fun drawing at midnight the night that this video goes live and today I am giving away my very favorite brush it's oh it's the Morphe 439 I covered it up just so you know these little labels that I have on mine um, basically help me to distinguish between my brushes and the brushes that I use on clients so that I don't ever get them mixed up because that would happen sometimes. Brushes would end up everywhere all over my house and I'd lose my brushes. So this is my very favorite Morphe brush and it's very thick, stiff bristles, but they're super soft on the end. I'm going to go ahead and do my foundation and my highlighting real quick. And I'm going to use the same foundation I always use, my full coverage, extreme coverage, because as you can see, my skin is super messed up from the pregnancy. Having my baby. It is starting to fade a little bit though, which is kind of, kind of nice. It's starting to go away. Oh crap, I just dipped in my translucent powder instead of my hand. I'm going to cover up my melasma. And I use sort of pushing, rubbing motions because I don't want to swipe too much and take off product. That's a common problem, like if you use a brush that just moves back and forth a little too much, you can take off just as much product as you're putting on. So I actually want to push this into the skin. And I have a new brush I absolutely love. I'm going to tell you all what it is. But this is my favorite one. So everybody who's on, tell me you're on. And then tonight, I always have the kids do the picking, but they'll pick somebody for the winner of this um, Morphe brush. Then I'm going to use my concealer to highlight. And I'm going to stick it right on because it's my personal one. I'm going to show you where I highlight. I did recently do a highlighting and contouring video, but some people have been messaging me asking me to do one, and I already did one. So you just have to go back to watch it, or you can go on my channel, which is Image by Lisa on YouTube. All right, so when I do my concealing and my highlighting, I bring it all the way down so that I don't have raccoon eyes because that does not look good. And I still have problems with raccoon eyes because... Sometimes I touch up in the afternoon and I don't blend out enough, so I've been a very bad girl about that. All right, I always use a beauty blender to blend out my highlight. I use a spray or a setting spray, and I do use a, um, a beauty sponge. You can get these, um, you can get them um, that are off-brand, not beauty blender um, name brand, and I like these just fine. This one's the Morphe brand, and I wet it really good. Don't use it dry. You won't get the same results. And then I just tap my highlight in. Again, I'm not moving any product around because I'm pushing the color onto my face. I'm just pushing it on. It stays a lot better. Girls, this is one of those little things that when somebody changes and starts using a blend beauty blender, they're like, oh my gosh, holy cow. I cannot believe how much better everything looks on my face. Especially if you have like, you feel like things look crepey and cakey around here. Using a wet beauty blender for me um, minimizes that. So I don't feel like when I smile, you see as many of those cracks and crevices when I use a beauty blender. So um, the other thing you can do for these crevices and these cracks 
is you cannot go too close to your eye with your foundation. The more layers that you have near your eye, the worse it's going to look when you smile. I'm the same way. Like I just noticed in the last couple of years, it's just horrible. When I smile, I see everything, you know, down here. So pat that in. And then also you want to use a finely milled translucent powder to set it. And since I've moved to using translucent powder, I don't get as much of the cakey stuff under here and the crepey cracks and I don't also crease. So my concealer is bulletproof now. It's not going to move and it's not going to crease in my fine lines and wrinkles. Guess what y'all? I'm getting Botox for Christmas. I said last week that I wanted it for Christmas. Wow. I'm getting it. I'm so excited. And um, for those of you who don't think I need it, yes I do. I do need it. It's preventative. Botox keeps you from showing expression. My forehead, I don't want to show expression up here. And um, I'm really excited. But I am a little scared of the needles. Because I don't like needles. I don't like going to the dentist. And I'm really scared of having needles in my forehead. But I'm really excited to have it done. Yes, I'm having it done. Y'all don't argue with me. I don't want to get inbox messaged all day about my Botox. I'm super excited. You guys have to be excited for me. So we're using the pencil brush by Morphe. It's called the 431 and I love this brush because it creates that super smoky look underneath. And I picked up just this bright purple because I wanted to keep going with that purpley look and I am smoking it up underneath. Smoky, smoky, smoky. Did you guys tell me you're here? I'll answer your questions and say hi after, but let me know you're here. Okay, so you see how pretty that is? I love that purple. And you could actually go in with like a dark black and go in your waterline. I didn't wanna do that again today. I wanted this to be sort of fresh and alive. I wanted it to make me look more awake. So I actually used a nude eye pencil. This one's by Rimmel. Anytime you put a white or a nude inside your waterline, it actually, opens your eye up a little bit more because it extends the whites of your eyes. So I'm going to go in my waterline today with a nude instead of like a darker color because I want to look fresh. You see the difference when I did that? And you can see it sitting there. You'll start to notice and pick up on those little things when you see pictures of people. It's just a small trick to make you look more awake and I know we all need to look more awake. I'm going to use my mascara on the bottom. You see how my forehead wrinkles are all stressed out right now because I'm putting mascara on? Soon they won't be doing that anymore. So excited. It's time, y'all. Seriously. The number one demographic for Botox is 25 to 35, and I got five years on them. So it's time. Going back over the top again. All right, so we are going to prep our lash. And I just discovered some new lash. I wore it this weekend, and I'm not sure if it's a Morphe lash or if I got it at Publix or where I got it, but I love it. And I couldn't even feel it this weekend. Like, I usually can always still feel the presence, sorry, girls, of my lashes, but I did not feel it. It had a very teeny tiny little small band, nice and natural. Let's see if y'all can see that. So we talked about lashes last week and how to put lashes on, but I didn't show you actually how to remove the glue. So this one is used. I used it this weekend and I'm just going to use my um, tweezers to just kind of pick the glue. You see it coming off? Pick the glue off and then I'll put new glue back on and then I'll just stick them back on. So don't throw away your lashes. You know, when you've worn them, just stick them in a little container. I showed you guys, I have a cute little container that is full of lashes. Probably looks like bugs. I would scare my kids, but here it's just peeling right off. It comes off super easy. So I'm going all the way down the lash. And I already trimmed these lashes. I told you last week we trim our lashes from the outside, not the inside. Because we want the inside lashes to still be short and not irritate our eyelid when we open our eye. Last little bit's coming off. You see it? 
pull, there it goes. So all of the glue came off. The only other trick I have for you is make sure that you go into your tweezers and remove all that glue because what happens is then when I go to set my eyelash down, it'll stick to the tweezers instead of my eyelids. And so that, that I used to mess up all the time. I'm gonna use my Duo Glue in clear. It is actually goes on white and then it dries clear. So I'm gonna cut, put a small thin line. Let's see if you can see this. I just dispense a little bit. Now, when I do this, on clients, I don't dispense it right from the glue to the lash because just in case there's too much glue that comes out, it's easier to put the glue on a little tray or something like that and then pick it up with a Q-tip and put a little bit on. But I'm pretty used to doing it this way, so I'm gonna do it this way. <clears throat> so there's my glue. And I've told you before, you wanna let it sit for about 30 seconds. So while it's sitting, I'm going to hold it with my hand and with my other hand, I'm going to pick up some product and we're going to contour real quick. I got the contour because I have a big forehead, a big forehead that's not going to feel or express emotion anymore very soon. I'm very excited about it. Okay. I'm picking up a darker contour powder. Today I'm using a wet dry powder in the color N4 and I just use this bronzer blusher brush. And I try to keep it pretty contained, girls, right from the top of my ear to just about here. So I'll do it pretty dark so y'all can see it, and then I'll blend it out. So we're going to carve out our cheekbone. Don't come too far down here. And then when you blend it, go up. Just kind of flick it up just a little bit. Light, light hand. Again, we're using a kind of small brush. My hair is getting in the way. All right, so there's my contour and I'm going to go across my forehead. Do I use a toothpick? You could use a toothpick when you put your glue on your eyelash, that would, that would work. All right, there's my contour. Sometimes I'll flatten out the brush like this and just go down the sides of my nose. I'm not going to chisel out my nose because that's going to be a whole nother video, but just to make my nose look smaller, I go along the sides of my nose like this to make it look smaller. I also go up underneath just like that. Okay, so there's my contour across my forehead. And you can see on this side my contour. Buff it out. All right, we're ready to put our lash on. Remember from last week, we look down at our mirror we do not close our eyes. That's a quick way to have your eyelids get stuck together. Don't close your eyes. Don't look straight at the mirror. Look down just slightly. Set the eyelash in place. And I still haven't fixed my, um, my eyeliner. But I set it in place with my tweezers. And then I work my way in. Now, because I don't have any eyeliner on, I have to get it really super close because I don't want to see my lash line. And the inside of the eye is always the trickiest part because it can lift really easily. So I always pay more attention to the inner eye, making sure it really stays before I leave it. And now I'm just going along with my tweezers and pressing the lashes together. How many of you have practiced since last week or went to go buy lashes after we did lashes together last week? I'm just curious. Did you go buy lashes? And how's it going? Have you, have you tried it? I encouraged you last week to just give it a try for like 30 days or do it at night before you go to bed, just stick them on. Because the more you do it, the better you'll get. And lashes add 
so much. As you can see, because you saw one side of my face done and one side of my face not done, lashes are like game changer. So I'm just making sure they're on there. It's always, of course, easier. It's easier for me to put them on other people because I can see everything. Looking good? You like the purple smoky? How many of you were like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing a purple smoky eye. And now you think, okay, I could do a purple smoky eye. It's kind of like wearing blue eyeshadow, which I'm going to wait till the new year to do because I love wearing blue eyeshadow, but that's another color that's really, really scary to people. Okay. You could at this point go over with a little more mascara if you wanted to kind of blend the lashes with the, the falsies. I really don't do that. I kind of go onto the bottom with one more coat. If you wanted to though, you could kind of use the, the mascara to push the lashes up a little bit. All right, there we go. I'm gonna put on blush and I'm gonna show you where I put it. I used like a rose, like a really light rose color blush and I'm gonna go up here. Cause remember this is chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. Chocolate is your contour and then you've got your strawberry, your blush and then your highlight is your vanilla. So chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. We're gonna go right on the actual cheekbone with that small brush and that rose color. And we're gonna get it on. I love blush. Y'all ready for me to finish my lips because it looks crazy. So the reason I did this color lip is because look at my dress. You see my little cutouts? I wanted to do something so, sort of deep because of my dress. Got matching earrings on, of course. All right, so we're gonna use wine. And I do the outside and the inside. So I've outlined and then I go in. Keeps it on longer, girls. Don't be afraid of bright colors. I told you that before. It makes your teeth look whiter. See, look. They're nice and white. All right, I'm gonna use Dusk over that. Dusk is my favorite color. Deep purpley color, isn't that pretty? All right, at this point, you could go over your whole face with your translucent powder just to set everything in place. All right, I'm gonna let my hair down and I'm gonna show you one last thing. I know it has nothing to do with makeup, but it has everything to do with the total package, the total look. So this did take some time. Getting this much curl in my hair, I have to use a lot of different products and I can show you that at another point. But what we're gonna do is I'm going to put in my extensions for you so you can see how it's done. And again, total image and a total look is about the little small things that you do that are a little bit different that sometimes you may have not even thought of that make your look go from here to here. All right. So extensions is one of those little things. I mean, even that eyeliner on the inside of the waterline just made my eye color pop and it looks, um, my eyes look bigger and more awake. So what we're going to do, and my, my extensions are from a company called Bellamy Hair, and I think I paid about $250 for these, um, this hair, but it is super thick, and it looks just like my real hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around so you can see. I'm going to part my hair at the very bottom, and I teased the crap out of my hair today so it's kind of hard to part and I'm gonna bring it up on my head and I'm actually gonna take my comb and just tease just a little bit the hair down here at the bottom isn't this attractive all right then I'm gonna take my three clippies the nice thing about this is it's fast it's easy and they clip in and I'm going to stick it right in Clip, clip it down. 
and pull it back and it covers it right up so you can see it's even more full okay and then we're gonna do it again we're gonna go back in sorry girls okay and I'm gonna pull it all forward again and this time I'm gonna use a bigger piece but I'm gonna use my back comb brush. I'm gonna tease just a little bit. Remember girls, this is New Year's Eve. Wear your extensions. Okay. Okay, at how much more hair I have now and it's all on the bottom so my big curls are on top that I worked so hard on it's like I have makeup in my hair right there but anyways so the extensions are down here at the bottom hidden in the very back of my head but it brings everything and makes it look much more full looks like I have much more hair than I really do okay and then you just arrange your hair over the extensions just like that. Okay, so this is my first New Year's Eve look. The soft, smoky, purple eye. I hope that you'll try it. Do you like it? Do you like our finished look? With lashes? Alright, so next week is the day after Christmas. I am going to go live. But I'm going to do a dramatic, crazy New Year's Eve look. Like, if you don't want something soft like this, and wear something simple like this and you want to wear sequins and cocktail dress and maybe a gown and you want to have glitter we're going to do a glittery smoky eye don't forget to um let me know that you were on this video because i will do a drawing tonight and it's for the m439 morphe foundation brush my absolute favorite thanks for joining in ladies and have a great christmas week happy holidays and merry christmas to everybody all right bye bye